Okay, guys, so here we have the 90 day post testosterone blood work. Um, I'm actually at 95 days post testosterone right now, but this is from day 90. I'm going to get this done every month over the course of this whole year to see how things rebound. So, notable things I should say right off the bat here I am not on HCG, I'm not on HMG, and I have not been on either one of those in about a month. I'm not on Clomid or Novadex or Rimidex. I haven't been on either of those in about a month. I should say the HCG and HMG, I haven't been on in about two months. But the Clomid and Novadex, I haven't been on in about a month. So I'm not even on any more PCT, uh, PCT drugs. I'm on nothing but natural supplements. I'm taking Tudka, kidney support, and ire from Levi Leviathan Nutrition. I'm taking vitamin D, D3, vitamin K2, and NAC. And acetylcysteine. I believe that's all the things I'm on right now. So here's what we got. Also, I've lost it. I shouldn't make no before I, I say this. I've lost uh, 22 pounds from when I came off testosterone. I'm down to 230 pounds body weight. It's basically 104, 105 kilos. And a lot of this is from dieting. I've been trying to diet down to start competing in the 220 weight class so I can be healthier and not have sleep apnea. Because I had quite bad sleep apnea, which was amplified by heavier body weights and then anabolics. So I can run lighter cycles, much more mild cycles. I can compete much healthier and I can not have sleep apnea at 220. So it's a no-brainer for me. So I still have 10 pounds to lose, but that'll be 33 pounds lost at that point. Or 32 pounds lost since I came off testosterone. And it will also be 42 pounds from my peak weight last year of 262. So here's what we got. My glucose was again 89, which is what it was in the last uh, blood work from day 60. I am not happy with this. I would like to get my fasted glucose down. This was fasted. Um, 89 isn't horrible, but it could be better. So maybe Derek or Leo will throw some suggestions on that. I think Leo has said in the past that fasting for 24-hour periods once a week, if not longer, will definitely uh, impact your insulin sensitivity and help with, with bringing fasting glu fasted glucose down. Kidney functions. Kidney functions, BUN was 21. I believe it was 20 on the last one. Creatinine was 1.11, which is it's never been that low in my entire life. As far, I mean, as long as I've been getting blood work done. So 1.11, it was 1.19 on the 60-day lab results. And then GFR was 89, whereas it was 82 on the last lab results. Both of those have improved. You want your creatinine to be as low as possible. You want your GFR to be as high as possible. So I believe these are accurate metrics for me now because I'm not carrying a ton of muscle mass compared to before. I'm not like jack to the hilt anymore or anything like that. But for bodybuilders and such, it may not be accurate. But anyway, that shows that the kidney support from Leviathan Nutrition has worked pretty well as it decreased my creatinine to the lowest it's ever been and raised my GFR to the highest it's ever been. Then we've got electrolytes all in the normal range. Honestly, I couldn't tell you what globulin means, but that is low. So the more important things down here, AST and ALT. So AST was 45, ALT was 48 on the last blood panel from day 60. So the difference here, I took 300 milligrams of Tudka every day from Leviathan Nutrition, and that brought me down almost in, you know, more than in half. So cut my, my liver enzymes in half to very good numbers here. Um, this is the lowest my liver enzymes have ever been as well. The big one you're seeing here, though, that everybody came to see, my test has more than quadrupled. My test has gone up almost four and a half times from what it was 30 days ago without taking any PCT drugs, no Clomid, no HCG, nothing of the sort. So that is interesting. That I was expecting it to be about 75, have doubled or so, but to go up four and a half times was not what I was expecting, especially not being on anything. And I noticed, I'm like, it has to have gone up because when it was at 38 NG per DL, deciliter, <laughs> um, I would do one set of a lift, like deadlift, and I'd be smoked. And I'd be so sore that I couldn't do any more sets. And now I'm doing like four sets that are heavy 
high reps, no problem. So I knew my recovery was, was way better. I could get a lot more done during a given session. So I knew it had to have gone up. So this is an interesting predicament. My estradiol is still below 15. Um, I think rather than I talked to Leo and for the sake of restoring fertility, uh, he suggests obviously doing an RFSH and HCG and Clomid, or actually, e, I think it's called the E-Clomiphene citrate, a little different version, uh, but don't quote me on that. That's what he prefers to do, but that was, we talked before I'd gotten these labs back, so I think I'm going to give it another month on nothing and see if things rebound even further, because if things are rebounding, presumably I wouldn't need... Clomid, HCG, and everything, but I'd love to hear Derek's input on this from more plates, more dates. He did an excellent video, excellent breakdown of my last video of blood work, and I'm really curious to see what he has to say because I don't know if anybody's ever really documented this too much where they are on anabolic steroids for, for many years, and then they, they come off and not even taking PCT drugs, everything starts rebounding. So I figured I'd still be shut down way further than 168 after 90 days, but here we are. Now, I should also show you FSH and LH. Let's highlight these. FSH went from 2.3 to 4.4, nearly doubled. LH more than doubled from 1.3 to 3.0. So again, I'm like, do I really need HCG and Clomid if things are bouncing back on their own? So I think we'll wait till the March 15th labs. We'll break it down. If things are continuing to go up, I'll ride this out. If not, for the sake, for the sake of restoring fertility, we might go on HCG and clomb and such. But I definitely would like Derek's opinion. I hope he, he can break this down. I've, I've messaged him a little bit on Instagram. I have a few more questions for him. And I'm going to go over this with Leo as well. What happened with my hematocrit here? Hematocrit 39, which is barely almost lower than normal, which I've never been this low in my life. So when I was on anabolics, hematocrit was 50 to 51. And then on the last blood panel, it was 45. Now, I think I know what Derek's going to say. He's going to say people, he told me over over uh, Instagram, he said people underestimate how long it takes for long esters to clear. So perhaps in the last lab panel, I was still holding on to retaining some of the long ester effects from the testosterone. And now it's kind of completely gotten out of my system and my hematocrit has dipped even lower to 39. That's just my guess, but I have no clue. So I'm going to be curious to hear what he has to say about that. Because I don't think 39 hematocrit is a good thing. It probably means my blood pressure is very low, which is, is good. But I don't really want it to be 39. That means I'm going to get a lot more out of breath and wind and stuff training. So I really want to hear what he has to say about that. Now, I mentioned this before. My absolute eosinophils, which is a measure of your immune system, it's a type of white blood cell. So my absolute EOS was always elevated. Every single blood test I've ever had done in my entire life. And this is the first time my absolute EOS are in the normal range. So I'm doing something right here because my immune system has seemingly strengthened and my body is healthier because this absolute eosinophils, a lot of people would overlook that. But for me, that has been elevated on every single blood test I've ever had done. And here we are and it's, it's finally in the normal range. This is the interesting one. I did not have this in the last lab panel. So I'd like to hear Derek's input on this as well. HDL cholesterol 45, I know that's not great, it's not terrible, it's not great. I simply said I have bad cholesterol genetics uh, as far as my family history. We do not have a good history with cholesterol. This is on a fairly clean diet, honestly much cleaner than I've, ever, I've eaten before. I don't eat red meat, I'm eating ground turkey, egg whites, uh, rice, that's about it. Uh, drink water. And my LDL is still 125. So the lowest I've ever been with my LDL is 121, which means I don't even think much. It's all my fault. A lot of it is genetic. So Leo suggested, Leo Rex of Leo and Longevity suggested I go on. I asked him about uh, azitamide, and he said I could do that and stack it with a very mild statin, and that would probably bring me below 100. And he said you want to be below 70, ideally. So... I may do that, uh, but I definitely would like Derek's opinion on this as well. We'll see what he has to say. Um, but those are the notable things. That's really it. That covers everything. So LDL could use some work. I still think HDL could use some work. Glucose could use some work. Um, 
Hematocrit, that's kind of interesting. And then Tesla.